I'm going to work out the ticket out the door problem I gave in class ooh, Thursday. Yeah, Thursday at the end of the class period. And I'm so impressed. Most of you got it right, but um, there will be a, a free response type problem on your test similar to this. So I want to make sure that you all are pretty solid in how to work these. So I'll walk through this, and then I suggest also going to the practice problem folder in D2L and, and working a few more on your own. So the problem stated that, um, as always, they'll typically give a reaction. You've got to pay attention to the phases of matter in these equilibrium ice table problems. Um, remember, please, that if anything is a solid or a liquid, it does not get included in the equilibrium expression. It has no effect on the equilibrium constant or any part of the equilibrium. So notice that these uh, are all gases. Um, water, quite often, most of the time is li liquid and is not included in an equilibrium calculation, but in this case, it's in the gas phase, so it is. So this problem is asking what the equilibrium constant is. It gives you the initial concentration of both reactants, and it gives you the equilibrium or final concentration of one of the reactants. So the first thing I usually do is set up the expression for the equilibrium constant. That'll get you partial credit, just setting up the generic expression for it without any numbers actually plugged in. And so you can see here is the generic expression for the equilibrium constant. Make sure that you have turned all of the coefficients into um, superscripts. Okay, that's real important. All right, so we have that all ready to plug in the equilibrium concentrations. So let's go ahead and put the information we know into the ice table, which I have constructed here. They gave us the initial concentration of nitrogen monoxide. It's 0 0.100. The initial concentration of hydrogen gas, 0 0.050. Then, unless you're told otherwise, you assume that the initial concentration of the products are zero. And the other piece of information they gave us here is the equilibrium concentration of nitrogen monoxide is 0 0.062. So any time you have both the initial and the equilibrium concentration of any of the components in a chemical reaction, you can do simple math. I want you to imagine that there's a, an addition subtraction line here. Um, and so what is the difference between 0.1 and 0.062? It is 0. 0.03. Three, eight. I should, my lines are kind of wonky there. Remember that the reactants are always decreasing in concentration, so you want a minus sign for the reactant in the change row here. So once you have one value in the change row, you simply look at the stoichiometry of the balanced equation and you can figure out all of the other change values based on the coefficients in the chemical reaction. So for every um, two nitrogen monoxide that react, the same amount or two hydrogen react. So that is a one-to-one -one ratio. So I'm going to put minus 0 0.038 for hydrogen also. Now we're at the product side. So we're going to be plus on both of these. All right, um, so when you look at nitrogen, it's only one nitrogen that's formed for every two nitrogen monoxide that is reacted. So that's half as much, right? So this is going to be plus, I'm just going to put 0 0.038 divided by 2. And there's a 2 coefficient in front of the water which means it appears at the same rate that hydrogen and nitrogen monoxide disappear. So that is 0 
So this change row is the most important part of the entire equilibrium table. So make sure you understand how to do that. Now that you have all the change values filled in, it's simply a math problem. 0.1 minus 0.038 is 0 0.062. 0 0.050 minus 0.038 is 0.012. Now remember you're adding on the product side. Okay, So let's see, 0 0.038 divided by 2 is 0 0.019. And 0 plus 0.038 is 0.038. Alrighty, so now we have the equilibrium values for all of the reactants and products. So we're going to take these values, go back up to the expression for K, and plug them in. So K equals, let's see, nitrogen is 0.019. Now water is 0 0.038. Now be really careful to pay attention to the superscripts, look at the um, exponents, okay? So we have to square this. And the reactants in the denominator, concentration of nitrogen monoxide, so that's 0 0.062, and that has a square, and then times hydrogen, which is 0 0.012, also squared. Be really careful entering all this into your calculator. I would go ahead and try to do it now, make sure you're using your calculator. This is a good time to also remind you to bring a non-programmable calculator to the exam. So if you plug all those values in correctly, and I am running out of room here, you should get that K equals, let's see, about 49.6. Remember that K is, uh, they don't use any units on it. Okay, so we just leave it without units. And that's it, okay? Remember what that means. If I were to ask you what's favored with this reaction, is it reactants or products, would you be able to tell? Well, look at back what K is. Products are in the numerator. Reactants are in the denominator. So if you have a K that's equal to 1 exactly, you could say that the concentration of products are about equal to concentration of reactants. In this case, K is greater than 1, which means that products are favored. Okay, they're, they're present in a greater quantity than reactants. That is it.